Hi, this is Tech again, and today I want to show you another trick for fixing pins on PGA CPUs. Now, this is not going to be your usual video where you have a CPU with like 5 to 10, maybe 20 messed up pins. This is going to be a trick specifically for those kind of CPUs that have at least, I don't know, 20% or so messed up like these. Uh, now, the basic bending back of the pins on these is the same process as on any other CPU. So you use your tweezers or your little knife blades and basically bend them back. But once you have them bent back, they are not going to be perfect. And that's what this is going to be about. Now, if you have CPUs with imperfect pins and you insert uh, a lot of them into a motherboard, you're going to eventually break one of the little springs that are in the socket and Best case scenario, it's a redundant pin. Second best case, it's a memory pin, so you can lose one memory channel. And worst case, um, basically you're going to break your board. Now, this little trick here helps you avoid that. And what you're going to need for it is two CPU sockets of your desired socket. Uh, now, I improved on this a little bit here. This is basically my universal uh, spacer socket. This is a AM3. Where you can see, I basically drilled, come on, I drilled out the little islands here. And you also have to remove everything around the edges. So it's just the part that's under the CPU. And the second part you need is just a regular socket top. Uh, no real modifications here, just ripped off of a dead board. Now, now you want your CPU that is sort of fixed. You might see that there are still some pins that are kind of crooked on here. And you want to insert it into this little spacer here. So like this, and you will see that it's not sliding in easily. It's kind of stuck on there. Uh, this basically means you would have that problem with the motherboard where it might break one of the springs, even though it kind of fits in the socket. Uh, these kind of sockets are designed in a way that they are zero insertion force. So it basically means you don't have to put any force on the CPU. And if everything works right, that is the same that's going to, that the CPU is going to be after this little process. So once you have it in here, uh, you just take tweezers or again, knife blade. I, I tend to use a, these little tweezers here, but knife blade works great and just push the CPU pins in the direction that you basically, you basically want to have them centered in these holes here. And you can really easily make it out because you see the uh, bottom of the pin and it's, it's only protruding maybe 0.2 millimeters or so from the, the plastic. So you can easily see if they are centered or if they are not centered. Uh, I'm not going to do this with all of the pins here, but basically once you have that, done on all the pins here, it's maybe going to take you like 10 minutes for a CPU, uh, maybe a bit longer if you're not used to it. And then, uh, this CPU I'm not going to fix on camera obviously, because 10 minute video for this would be kind of too long. Basically how you know you're done is that your CPU is going to slide in and slide out without applying any force, so I can just lift up the socket, have the CPU in my hand, CPU in the socket, drop it. So that's basically how you know you're done. And once you have that done, this CPU is pretty much safe to use uh, in a motherboard without any risk of wearing it out. Now this is uh, especially important for uh, platforms where the motherboards are worth a significant amount of money. So stuff like uh, DFI NF4, DFI NF3 on, on 754, uh, maybe your DFI 790FX on, on uh, AM2, stuff like that. Uh, if you just bin your CPUs on a crappy motherboard, uh, let's say, I don't know, you have a random AM3 board, for example, that you only use to pre-bin your fixed CPUs and then 
you just throw away the the ones that are not good enough. Uh, I'm not sure if you even want to do this whole process or if it's not worth wasting your time. Uh, that that's up to, up to you to decide, to be honest. Um, but once you insert your CPU into a valuable motherboard, I would 100% recommend doing this first, so you minimize your chances of killing that um, very good motherboard. Anyways, that's it for this little trick, and yeah, I hope it helped. It will probably only help you if you get your CPUs from a recycler or scrap lots. So, but I know some people watching this do those exact things, so I hope at least I helped like two or three of you. Anyways, bye.